Welcome back to Cooking Bird. In today's adventure, we're leaving Cape Town and heading to Oatswaden to explore the incredible Kango Caves, one of South Africa's oldest and most fascinating tourist attractions. Join us as we delve into the stunning underground wonderland filled with spectacular formations and rich history. We'll be spending the night in Oatswaden and in the next video we'll journey back to Potterstrom. Along the way, we'll capture the beautiful landscapes and make this trip unforgettable. This is episode 12 of our Cape Town Adventure series. The Kango Caves, located in the Swartberg Mountains near Oatswaden in South Africa, boasts a history spanning millions of years. Formed from limestone, these caves feature a network of chambers and tunnels adorned with stunning stalactites, stalagmites and calcite formations. Around 20 million years ago, the region was a shallow sea. Tectonic activity and rainwater erosion over time created a magnificent underground chambers we see today. Indigenous San and Khoikhoi people who used these caves for shelter and spiritual purposes, left behind rock art and artifacts. In 1780, a local farmer named Jacobus van Zeil discovered the caves while searching for lost cattle. This discovery sparked interest among settlers and explorers. By 1891, the caves were officially opened to the public with guided tours starting soon after. Notable features include the Hall of the Mountain King, a vast chamber with grand formations, and the Rainbow Chamber, known for its colorful mineral deposits. Over the years, the caves have inspired local folklore, adding to their allure. Today, the Kango Caves are a major tourist attraction, offering a range of tours from easy explorations to challenging adventures. Visitors can experience millions of years of geological history and South Africa's cultural heritage. If you enjoyed learning about the Kango Caves, please like, share and subscribe for more fascinating stories and adventures. Let's head inside and discover the magic of Kango Caves. Before visiting the caves, we enjoyed a meal at a restaurant. To top it off, we spotted Victor Matfield dining there, but we were too shy to say hi. The food was absolutely amazing and delicious. After eating, we headed to the cave entrance, where we had to wait 5 minutes before entering the cave. Finally, we ventured into the cave, eagerly anticipating the wonders that awaited us inside. Filming a video was challenging due to the dim light conditions inside the cave. Before we tell you anything about the Kango Caves, as you can see, this is a very big group. Yes. Um, so what's going to happen for the first two chambers? We will stick together as one big happy family. After the second chamber, then I'm going to divide this group into three smaller ones. 
just to make it more comfortable for everyone, especially for us. Now the first group to be leaving in the second chamber will be the adventurers. So ladies and gentlemen, if you have an adventure ticket, please keep your tickets. We will need to check it later on in the second chamber, so please do not throw it away. We have a few rules and regulations. The Kanga Caves was declared a national monument in the year 1938. So therefore we have a few rules. Please do not touch or lean against any of the limestone formations. They do damage very easily. Also no eating and drinking, only water, still water is allowed in the cave. You can take photos, flash photography is also allowed. You can ask questions and have a look at <laughs> Thank you very much. Is that okay with everyone? Yeah. Okay, first, we're going to make our way down into our first chamber. Thank you, warning. There's about 72 steps downwards. They are not all the same size and sometimes a bit slippery. So please do take your time. One more favor. When we go down, please do not stop on the staircase to take a few photos because that will delay the tour. I promise once I'm finished with my commentary, I'm going to switch on all the show lights for you. We descended down the stairs. I apologize once more for the limited visibility. The cave was too dark to capture on camera. to come down. Um, the reason why we keep the rooms dark, we try to prevent algae from growing on the formations. Mm. The algae grows because of the carbon dioxide we breathe out, the humidity and also the lights. So later on I'm going to switch on all the show lights for you at home. Right ladies, gentlemen, so this is our first chamber and it was discovered in the year 1780. And it was by a Dutch farmer named Jacobus van Zijl. But now, as the story goes, apparently Mr. van Zijl lived a herdsman shepherd. His name Klaas van Vogel, and he was looking for some lost cattle on the outside. So he discovered the cave by accident. He went back to the farm to tell Mr. van Zijl about the discovery. So on 11 July 1780, Mr. van Zijl was the first person to set foot in this chamber. So here's the name the Pan Zail saw. But now back in the year 1780, there was no electricity. And Mr. Pan Zail could not make use of the staircase. So when he came in for the first time, he made use of the exact same entrance as we did. But only he was lowered down by means of a rope. In his hand, he had a tiny oiler, which had the same strength as an orange line right in front. So folks, what I'm going to do right now, I'm quickly going to switch up all the lights just to show you how dark it was. It's not loud shedding, it's just a few seconds, I promise. Um, I need everyone to please remain where they are. Focus in the orange light. Friendly warning, ladies, please make sure the one you're standing next to is the one that you can probably do. Okay? It's just for a few seconds. <laughs> Okay, folks, I'm going to switch off the lights. Please remain standing. Please remain here. Here we go. So, welcome to the year 1718. Mr. Fanzo, you don't have a phone in 1718. Okay, so this is how you saw the Absolutely.
now you can finally witness the breathtaking beauty of the cave for yourself. To reach the second chamber, we had to ascend more steps. Now, first one seventeen eighty, this one seventeen ninety two. So there was a twelve year difference. The reason why it took them so long to discover this section is because the pathway we just made use of it didn't exist back then. It was actually blocked off. It was blocked off by a solid clay wall. They only removed the clay wall in the year 1950 to level up the floor in our first chamber. But if you have a look at my door chart in the back, please, that would be the original entrance into this chamber. So Mr. Puerta, he had to make use of a tunnel, an interlinked tunnel system. The tunnel begins in the first chamber and is about 50 meters long. So that would be the original entrance. Well, ladies and gentlemen, chamber number two is said to be our most beautiful chamber, both decided of visitors. Let me switch on the show light to you. Then you can decide for yourself. Here we go. Wow! It works every day. I concur with the lady. The second chamber is indeed the most beautiful. Once again, we had to ascend stairs to reach the third chamber. My name is Jolene and I'll be taking care of you for the rest of the three chambers. We are in the chamber called Good and Evil or the Rainbow Chamber. Now, this chamber was discovered by Louis Water in 1860. Now, over there, is the entrance that Mr. Bota used and they crawled all the way until they came up here. Now this hose is 30 meters deep so they couldn't walk standing up straight. They had to crawl otherwise falling inside. And that was their last day on earth. And this is actually, remember my colleague told you that chamber one and chamber two were filled with clay? Well, this is the cable case original floor. Now, if you mind following my lights in the profile, remember I said the chamber of good and evil. Well, this is the evil part, the wood sticking out, and the nose you can see. Yes, okay. We call that one devil the devil. Now, for the good part. Oh, there you mind following my line? There we go. That looks like a grilled cheese sandwich. <laughs> or a homey book. Cross upside down. And next to it looks like an elephant's ear. Or an angel wings. And you still remember this one? Old school. Baptism point. <laughs> now, in 2006, we did a survey because most of our tourists complained that the colored lights actually make the formation look fake. But I'll leave it up to you to decide. This is the colored lights, ladies and gentlemen. Okay. No, no. Nice. But 70% of our tourists actually agree that they prefer that. White light. White light. Eh, there we go. Oh, it is beautiful in Corsa. 
But you can take a few photos and when you're ready, you can proceed to the next chamber. I think you turn off the lights. <laughs> from the entrance. Now, this chamber was also discovered by the gentleman, Louis Water in 1846. Now, the reason why this chamber is called the drum room is because of this formation. This formation is semi-translucent because of the clay impurities inside of the formation. Touching this, what you say, don't no, use it, lean, stand, or touch any of the formations, which are all blacks, all stability, and the formation, that one formations have different colors. It's not all blacks and blacks. And you're wondering what that step is leading to, that is our adventure part. We sort of start off with 172 steps, then proceed to the main of venture over 20 meters in length, go up a ladder, through the lover's tunnel, which means your house at pieces for 10 meters, then you go up the chimney, which is 3 
3.6 meters upwards, then you come sliding to the pump box and you come back in a loop. Did you know that in Africa, the largest cave in South Africa is actually the Kango Caves? And we have the largest, no, we have the largest cave in South Africa, but the largest cave is actually the Dunga. Sorry, people. <laughs> the Sun Dun Cave is actually in Vietnam, where you book a holiday for seven days. That's actually an island inside the cave. Opening, you skydive inside the cave and you a seven day holiday. We have the deepest cave as well. It's called the Busman's Hut in the Northern Cape. And the most dangerous cave we have in Kenya is called the Kutum Cave. Can you make space for that bedroom, people over there? Yeah. There we go. Busman. <laughs> <laughs> and there's the Kutum Cave. And After having so much fun, we're now exiting the cave. Thank you for joining us at Kango Caves. It's been an incredible experience exploring this natural wonderland filled with stunning formations and rich history. We hope you have enjoyed it as much as we have. Tonight, we are staying at Turnberry Boutique Hotel in Oatswer. In the next video, we will be heading back to Potterstrom, marking the final episode of our season. If you found this video inspiring, Please give it a thumbs up, share this video with your friends and subscribe to Cooking Bird for more captivating journeys. Your support means the world to us. We're eager to hear your thoughts and experiences, so drop us a comment below. Until next time, take care, keep exploring and we'll see you in the last episode.